conceptual perspective. People talk Real about talk, it. Like throwing shots. All of the elements. Good morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. First, hello to everyone. Uh, a lot of you have been following along uh, with my recent health scare. Um, and I want to thank you guys for the love, the support, the well wishes, the prayers. Uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me and my family um, to, to uh, receive that much love uh energy and light uh with everything that goes on in the world so i want to say thank you for that this is literally the first time that i've gone live <clears throat> since uh the heart attacks and yeah multiple heart attacks uh the first several uh were during the week last week and they were dismissed as being something else uh then there was a major one on um Saturday night that landed me in the emergency room in the hospital and while in the hospital pushing and I mean really literally doing everything possible to be released uh, and actually after having the doctor say okay if we get your pressure to here blah 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 but you're still gonna have to sign I forget what the form is but it's a form basically saying that I'm walking out of the hospital and being discharged against the advice of my physician um, I literally signed that <clears throat> it was in the wheelchair being rolled uh, to the elevator to come down and get in the car and had another major heart attack. Um, this time they triggered a what was called a rapid response team. Everybody showed up and never had that many people that were only one time. Everybody's doing something. Uh, and then they were able to get me down to I think what they call a heart cath uh, room area. Um, similar to an emergency room, uh, but it's where they do cats. Um, and literally performed a procedure that saved my life when uh, the doctor found the blockage. It was a 90% blockage of my main artery going to the heart. Um, <clears throat> and so they saved my life. And uh, I got to watch them until they kind of sedated me. Uh, move and, and, and be in, in sync with one another, this large team of people that are moving to save uh, a person's life. And I watched that. And so I'm truly grateful for the work that they did. Um, and again, I want to thank everybody. This is the first, I was saying that to say, this is the first time that I've actually gone live uh, since then. Uh, I've done a couple of recordings to say thank you and to share some sentiments. Um, good morning, everybody. And I'm still in the process of recovering. I'm nowhere near 100%, uh, but uh, I do feel I'm able to, you know, engage in a live audience without any type of incident, uh, you know, because I mean, emotional things, I mean, that can get your heart rate up can, you know, be a little scary still, but you know, I've done some walks and everything and I think I'm good. I go to see the doctor tomorrow to get clearance to take it a little bit higher. Uh, so I'm kind of excited about that because you know me, I'm ready to get back to work. But uh, to all of those who have been advising me that I need to slow down, that I need to, uh, you know, back it up a little bit. I heard you. Uh, I take it. My wife has been on me. I'm definitely scaling back. There are a lot of things I'm taking off my plate. A lot of things that will have to be outsourced uh, from the work that I do. The things I hold most dear will still be with me, but you know, I'm always taking on stuff and it, uh, it's just at a point right now where that can't be my priority. My priority has to be my health. So I'm gonna be spending a lot more time making sure I'm healthy. Um, but again, I just wanna say thank you to everyone. Um, it means the world to me and my family. Um, and uh, again, I, most of all, I wanna say thank you to my wife. Uh, who has been by my side all the way, uh, you know, from, from the moment that I said it was a, <laughs> a, a str muscle strain or a cartilage strain from a workout 
and she insisted I go to the doctor and tell me saying, baby, it's, it's something else. And, uh, getting me ready and getting rushed to the hospital and being there every step of the way. Uh, I want to, you know, make sure that I acknowledge her for the true partner, uh, that she is. And, uh, again, love, I thank you. <clears throat> uh, I'm not going to be too long. I, uh, what I want to share with you today, but there are some revelations that came out of this and, you know, I've been through some things in my life um, that I had to overcome. And the one thing that always encourages me is that I've yet to come into a situation in which I may seem overwhelmed at a time where people may be literally at a distance observing what I'm going through and making the postulation that this is the thing that will take me out. But yet, watching myself come out of it better, stronger, more focused, more centered, more prepared. It's kind of like what Jeremiah said in the book of Lamentations when he said, these things I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. And, you know, the thing that I look at is this, you know, was scary. It was scary to me because I'm looking at my wife. And I know what I'm going through. This is the last one, the last heart attack that led to the procedure in the hospital. I'm looking at my wife and I'm looking at the concern in her eye, the fear of losing me. And then I'm thinking this can't happen. You know, my wife uh, just uh, short of five years ago, uh, it'll be five years in July, lost her mom to a massive heart attack while she had to stand there and watch. Um, and I was, all I could think of was, I can't do that to her. And I can think of the, 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 the concern and the, the, the fear of leaving her behind to deal with this and what, what was going through my mind. And, 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 and I had to pull myself together and I had to look at it and I had to be honest with myself. I had placed myself in a situation and in a position in which there was time that I could have done something about it. And now I was going to have to trust that God, in whatever way you view God, but in the way that I view God, that God was going to have to behold this together and, and, and actually answer the prayer because it was out of my hands. I could have died and it was going to be nothing that I could do about it. But here I am. So I'm, uh, like I said, I'm immensely grateful in so many different ways. And I am excited in the sense that I have never come to a point like this and not come out on the other side better. And so I know something is there. I know that we've been dealing with a lot, me and my family uh, and, and, and some close friends. I mean, that we've been talking long before this happened and there were a lot of things going on. And, and I started to think about how many people are at points where they feel overwhelmed, where they feel uh, defeated, where they feel abandoned, where they feel let down, where their situation doesn't align with their uh, uh, spiritual assignment or alignment. And what I mean by that, I'm talking about being spiritual and cultural and historical royalty but feeling like you're much less. I'm talking about looking at your situation and assessing the situation and attempting to, out of a current situation, assess your, the totality of who you are. And if you're not careful, what will happen is what often happens with us is that we turn around and we look at our situation, we look at our circumstances, and we assess who we are. We define who we are by where we're at instead of where we're going, instead of what we have been designed to become. And, and it came to mind and it said, you know, to me in my thinking, I'm like, I just want every last person that sees this video to know that because of where you're at, 
you may feel that the idea of royalty, the idea of a spiritual aristocracy, uh, the idea of being uh, permanently edified and uplifted isn't your reality. You may feel that because you're going through a divorce, because you're struggling with your finances, because your career has not come to the point that you thought it would. The business is struggling and all of these things. And you, you may be going through a legal battle. You may be dealing with some past issues and things that you're struggling with that simply doesn't align with the idea that you're something designed to be phenomenal and great. You, you're going through something right now. Let me tell you something. All that has happened in this dark moment is that you have been bumped by life and your crown is shifted a little bit. And, and in the darkness and the shadows of what you're going through, you can't see the crown. Let, just listen to me. I, I'm almost done. All you got to do is adjust your crown. Trust the design because the designer is a beast. And the designer has designed you for greatness. The designer has never designed anything for the sake of mediocrity and being average. The designer designed you to be exceptional, extraordinary, phenomenal. And what I want you to understand is that you're just in the shadows of what you're going through and you can't see the crown because the shift that happened when you were bumped by this circumstance shifted your crown. But all you got to do is readjust it and trust that the design is pure. Just trust that the design is pure. Adjust your crown. You're remarkable. You're amazing. And your situations and your circumstances are not what define you. Your perseverance and the adherence to the design, the commitment to see things through, the willingness to go the distance is what's going to define you. Did you stand? Did you push forward? Did you refuse to relent? One thing that I love about having had the opportunity to speak before people for years in, in multiple places and environments uh, is that you get to kind of see you, who you are and how you think and how you present yourself in multiple situations when you get to revisit places that you've spoken. And I can be defined by what people start saying as I walk on the stage, as I'm being introduced and I'm walking on the stage. There's a common thread amongst people, whether I'm speaking to businesses, whether I'm speaking to churches, whether I'm speaking uh, 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 to uh, community organizations, that, that there's a commonality in the response to me returning and it's them chanting, no surrender, no retreat. That's me, I'm relentless. I haven't won so many times because I'm the smartest in the room. I haven't won so many times because I'm a perfect decision maker. I haven't won so many times because I simply have all the answers. I've won because I refuse to quit. I'm not one who draws back. Adjust your crown. And in just in adjusting it, you've got to touch it. And when you touch it, it will remind you of who you are. I'm going to leave you with that. Look, you guys, um, I had a lot of time to think. And I am a very blessed person, not just because I survived this uh near-death experience, but because I've had an opportunity to express my gift for years in my writings, in my books, in my lectures, in my speeches, in my academic papers, 
in my one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions with my clients, in my mentoring, in my being a father, in my being a husband. I've had this unbelievably awesome experience of being who I was designed to be. I am nowhere close to being what I was built to be, but I'm working on it. As my, 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 my adopted father and my biological, who's, who was my biological great-grandfather used to say, I'm not, every day I look at myself and I'm not the man I should be, but I thank God I'm not the man that I used to be. And that is where I'm at. I'm striving to be what I was designed to be. But I look at me and I'm so grateful that I can look at this person and see I'm not the person I was 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five or even a year ago, that I'm pressing towards the mark. And I'm grateful. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to press towards the mark. See, there's a higher calling on your life. And I'm not speaking religiously. I'm using some... Uh, some common spoken terms, but I'm speaking from the power of God who designed you to do something exceptional, to be a representation of the designer. And you're going to have some difficult moments. You're going to have some challenges. That's okay. Adjust your crown. I'm going to leave you on that. Uh, again, there's some awesome things going. Uh, I'm coming back uh with a blast uh in addition to uh still doing the 30-day challenge now i'm probably going to drop the number from 25 to 10 uh after april uh to make it more manageable as well as to be fair to my paying uh full for full price paying clients but i'm going to continue it uh like i said it'll probably be 10 people a month that will get a chance and it's going to be first comes first serve uh, I'm still going to consistently do the drawing for the Platinum Package, which is a 52-week, year-long uh, package that allows you to work with me for 52 weeks. Uh, it's valued at 10 5 I'm doing a drawing for those who actually uh, buy into the challenge. Um, we're going to continue to do that. We're also going to be doing a 90-day challenge, and it's going to be health-centered uh, because I'm definitely amping up what I need to do for me. And I'm inviting people to come along, whether you need to lose weight, whether you need to get more uh, cardio fit, whether you need to get more mentally fit. Uh, this is a conglomerate effort of aligning oneself with one's purpose and design. And that means you've got to be emotionally fit, mentally fit, spiritually fit, and physically fit in order to find the harmony and homeostasis necessary to really live life at the level of your design. And you can, it's easy to get out because there's so much happening and so much that you can lose focus and you can get too centered on one thing and you start to sacrifice the others. My goal is going to be to find this holistic level of healthiness. And I'm gonna invite you to come along. Uh, I'm, it's gonna be, I think, a wonderful experience for everybody involved. And I'm inviting uh, those who want to come along. I haven't thought about the pricing of what, because I haven't thought about how I'm going to deliver it, but it's starting this week. I can tell you that. And I'm inviting anybody who wants to come along to get your own program designed for you. And we're going to do 90 days and we're going to develop the discipline to be what we need to be in every facet of our lives, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. It has to be. And that's one of the things that we don't understand is that you can be on point in one place and suffering in another place and you create this imbalance. And anybody that understands uh, uh, biomechanics and kinesiology or understands the basic elements of psychology understands that when you create an imbalance, because too much focus is given to one area and too much pressure is placed on one area because it's the strong point and this is the weak point, that there's a breakdown that takes place. And that's where injury happens. And so what we have to realize is that we've got to be balanced in taking care of ourselves. Uh, we've got to create peace in our lives. We've got to create joy in our lives. And that's our responsibility. No one else's. 
Uh, we've got to stop depending upon other people to make us happy. We've got to stop depending on other people to establish our peace. We've even got to stop depending on other people's people to create our opportunities to excel in the areas we desire to excel. That's on us. What we will find is that when we become committed in those areas that God, the universe, life will respond as we, as we assess and as we move and as we act. Providence doesn't take place until the decision to act has been made. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I hope some of you guys will sign up uh, and take this journey with me. I mean, if you know that you're not where you need to be health-wise in any area, this is the day that you can sit up and make a decision and say, this is where I'm starting. And then we will move from there. Uh, I'm inviting you to come along. I'm excited about it because I know what this means and the possibilities that lie behind it. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, as I always say, I, I'm living my life on full so that when the time comes, I die on E. I will have left nothing behind undone. I will, not, I will have not left any untapped potential. I will have fulfilled my purpose. And I am challenging you to take the same approach. You want to leave this world having left an impact, knowing that you did more than serve yourself, knowing that you touched lives, knowing that you made a difference, knowing that the world is now different because you were in it. And when you do that, you will literally have lived a life that will outlive you. And that's the beauty of it. It will speak of you long after you're gone. It's called a legacy. And I'm challenging you to live it. On that note, I'm going to check out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. For those of my people on YouTube who's going to see this as a recording, because I'm shooting it live on, on uh, Facebook, I promise you that at some point today, I'm going to stop by and pay you guys a visit live. Uh, and we're going to chat it up. You know, my, my YouTube people are just totally real. And true, you guys have held me down. Uh, so I'm definitely coming to you, but I wanted to start this morning uh, with the fam on Facebook. And I'm, I will make my rounds. I'm not going to do them all today, but I will get to YouTube. But uh, Instagram and, 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 and uh, Periscope, Twitter, you know, same thing. But I'm going to get to you guys. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you each in my own, each with each of you in my own way as I do. But I had to get started this morning. Again, thank you guys for the love and support and the prayers and everything. And uh, feels good to be back. Uh, I'm still setting up my schedule about, you know, what. And I've got to work back into being in full swing uh, because I still get a little fatigued if I go too long. Uh, but, you know, I was able to get through this. I'm pretty good. So I'm going to check out of here again, man. I love you guys so much. And I thank you for all the love and support that you've shown me and my family. On that note, I'm out of here. Peace. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.
Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. From a conceptual standpoint, people talk about it. All of the elements.